In this video, we're going to look at the difference between distance and displacement. So first, let's look at the definitions of the two terms. Distance is the total ground covered by an object during its motion. And I'm sure you've done a lot of measurement of this in the past. So for example, if I walk around the school campus and I've walked 700 meters, then that's my distance. Displacement, on the other hand, is how far an object has moved from its starting position. And this may sound like the same thing at first, but we're going to talk about how these two things are different by looking at some examples. So our first example is running on a track. So let's say that this is a 400 meter track. One lap around, the track is 400 meters. So we start at position one, and the blue dot represents you, who's about to run around the track. So we take our lap all the way around the track, which means that we've gone a distance of 400 meters. And this should make sense. It's a 400 meter track. We've gone around once. So we've traveled 400 meters. Now our displacement, however, displacement, remember, is how far we are from our starting position. Well, we started at that blue dot at number one. But we've ended up at the red dot, which is also in the same position at number one. So if displacement is how far we are from where we started, well, we're in the exact same spot. So our displacement is actually zero meters. We haven't moved anywhere from our starting position as compared to our ending position. All right, so even though we have 400 meters of distance that we've covered, we haven't accomplished motion from one place to another from our starting to our ending position, so our displacement is actually zero. Let's look at another example. So let's say we're walking home from school, we're standing at the corner, and then we walk to our house, and that distance happens to be 500 meters. So we've walked 500 meters from the corner to our house. So if we look at our distance traveled, that'd be 500 meters. Now in this case, our displacement is the same. Our displacement is also 500 meters because we started at the corner and we've gone 500 meters away from our starting position. So our displacement now is 500 meters. So in this case, they're the same, except there is one difference. We need to add in something extra to displacement and that's direction. So not only have we gone 500 meters, but we've gone 500 meters to the east. All right, and that's going to be important as we start to look at more complex problems. So distance does not have to have a direction, but displacement really should. Let's look at another example. So same situation, we're walking home, we're at the corner, we go 500 meters east to our house. But then when we get home, we realize, you know what? We were supposed to go and work on a project with our friend who lives two doors down. So we're going to turn around and go back 200 meters back to our friend's house. So let's look at our distance and our displacement in this situation. Again, we're going to look at those directions to help us. So we first walked 500 meters to the east, and then we walked back 200 meters west. Remember, with distance, the direction doesn't matter. It's just the total distance we cover. So we walked 500 meters, and then we walked another 200 meters. So we're going to add those together because the direction does not matter for distance. We've walked 500, we've walked another 200. So our distance total that we've walked is 700 meters. Displacement is another thing altogether, though, because remember, displacement is how far we are from where we started. So first we walked those 500 meters to the east, all right? But we want to know that yellow highlighted part. How far are we now from where we started at our friend's house? So we were at the corner. Now we're at our friend's house. We want to know that distance. So we walked 500 meters to the east, but then we walked 200 meters back to the west. So we actually lost distance from our starting point at the corner. So we're going to subtract those 200 meters this time. We went 500 and came back 200. So we subtract 200 and we have a total displacement from purple line to purple line of 300 meters from the corner to our friend's house. So let's look at another example. Let's say that we're driving around uh, and our friend says, hey, park in front of Pacific Place and pick me up. All right, so 
we're driving along and we realize, uh-oh, we've accidentally passed Pacific Place. So we were supposed to stop here and pick up our friend, but we've gone too far and now we're in front of Nordstrom. So we want to get back to that spot in front of Pacific Place so we can pick up our friend. But unfortunately, we've got a lot of one-way streets here, so I can't just turn around and go back. Instead, I'm going to have to take a path going down these one-way streets and back to where it is that I need to go. So to know the total distance that I've gone, I need to know all of the individual distances of the paths that I've taken to get back to where I went. So again, to calculate my total distance, I'm just going to add up all of those distances to get my total distance of 1300 meters. But my displacement, remember, is what I'm accomplishing through that motion. And really what I'm trying to accomplish is just getting from Nordstrom back to Pacific Place. So that's only this short distance right here in purple. So by doing all of that motion, going around and around to get from uh, Nordstrom back around to Pacific Place, I've really only accomplished a displacement of 200 meters. So there's our displacement. So even though I've gone all the way around and gone a distance of 1300 meters, my starting point and my ending point are only 200 meters away from each other. So that is my displacement. Let's do a word problem. So we have here, during football practice, Juan runs 300 meters east, then he runs 200 meters west, and finally, he runs 50 meters east again. So let's, let's look at this. We've got our distance, remember, is the total distance he travels. It's just the total ground he covers. So we're going to find all of the different distances that are listed in the problem and put them all together. So he goes 300, 200, and 50 meters. And we'll calculate displacement in a moment. So he, we put together 300, 200, and 50 meters. So his total distance that he's run is 550 meters. That's pretty simple. Displacement though, we're gonna have to look a little bit more at the directions he went. So let's draw a picture. It's a lot easier that way. So here's Juan, and he's going to go 300 meters east. So now he's over here. So he's traveled 300 meters. But then it says he's going to go 200 meters west. So he goes back the other direction, 200 meters. So instead of being here, now he's over here again. All right, so he's gone 300 meters east, gone back 200 meters to the west. Then we're going to go again. He's going to go 50 meters to the east. And so now he's over here. But we have to figure out his displacement. How far is he from where he started? So let's do the math on that. He starts out by going 300 meters. But then he's going to lose 200 meters of distance because he goes back the other direction, 200 meters. So he's lost 200 meters of distance from his original spot. So we subtract those two, and after his first two sets of motion, the 300 meters and the 200 meters, he's only 100 meters from where he started. But he's not done moving yet, right? He's east of where he started by 100 meters. But he moves again. So we take that 100 meters, and we're going to add on another 50 meters because he moves 50 more meters to the east. So he's getting farther away from his point of origin again, and so he's gone a total of 150 meters east from his starting point. So again, that distance from where he started to where he ended is 150 meters, and that is his displacement. So I know this may seem a little bit confusing at first, but let's review the two um, definitions again to make sure you're clear. Distance is the total ground covered by an object during its motion. Displacement is how far an object is from its starting position. And while it may seem difficult at first, remember the best way to learn this is to practice, practice, and practice again. So make sure you try your problems, keep practicing this, and you're going to do awesome. Always ask your teacher if you have questions.